At 34, it's getting tighter and tighter. Um, and I think it's showing the, 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 the quality of depth at our football club. Um, I'm going to go with Jackson Binns. Uh, I think to come into a football club at VFL level, didn't play any senior football, was probably a fraction unlucky given his really consistent and strong form at VFL level to get a senior opportunity. But we were we were travelling along very well in the second half of the season when his form was really good. But to be able to come into the VFL system with a, with a slight body, he's not a big boy, um, and win the best and fairest at VFL level, which is a, a really elite competition, um, is testament to him. Still 19 years of age, only 72 kilos, pretty small, pretty light, is flying in the preseason, has a, a huge amount of energy and is super consistent, super consistent and a big, big ball winner. Needs to, like a lot of youngsters, and this will probably come with strength, Needs to continue to improve his uh, previous disposable by foot, particularly penetration. Um, but yeah, it's for me, there's a fair bit of hype around Jackson Bins, but where does he fit in? Can he can he be played anywhere other than a wing? Can he spend some time into the midfield? Could he be a small defender or a small forward? Time will only tell. But is a fair bit to like about Jackson Bins. Fuck, this is getting difficult. But just remember, this is just my opinion. Um, and we're certainly building up a, a nice sort of stockpile of small forwards. And at 33, it may be a bit of a surprise but it is getting difficult. I'm going to go with Matt Owies. Um, and that's, yeah, pretty tough considering goal-wise he was, he was our best small forward on the score sheet in 2023. Dropped for the prelim final. Um, his form in the finals wasn't great, but he did kick a couple of bags of three on two occasions, one against the Cats and then another against the Western Bulldogs early in the season. My concern with Matt Owies at 26 years of age and coming a fair way back, he certainly showed some development and improvement um, over the course of his time at Princess Park, coming from a, a basketball background originally. Has he got any more improvement in him? Is he flexible enough? to go into the midfield for small periods? And is he dynamic enough to be a really, really dangerous small forward in this competition, given the fact that we do have a number of small forwards coming through? Matthew Owies. At 32, it's Alex Chincotta. It's hard to believe he's 27 years of age. Um, and played a, a fair chunk of football last year after getting his chance, came onto the list late. Overlooked in previous drafts, had an ACL injury early on in his uh, in his football journey, and he's done it the hard way, and he showed a lot of promise um, in our back half last year. Didn't have the greatest of final series, but he's hard at it. He's quick, he's strong, he's powerful, he's a long kick, but it's going to be tough for spots. Um, as that sort of medium, small defender this season. And I can just feel that he may be squeezed out with the improvement of the likes of someone like a Lockie Cowan and Zach Williams coming back into this team. Even someone like uh, you know Sam Doherty at times being pushed back as well. So it's going to be tight for spot. So it's a tough one. Um, and I am really interested to see whether this bloke, you don't need everyone to be a superstar on your football team, you just need to, to, to do a job. Can he take his game to another level? Have we seen, I suppose, the ceiling already of Alex Chincotta? At 31, I'm going to go with a really exciting prospect, I think, moving forward for the Carlton Football Club, coming into his second season played the first six games of last year and then came back and played another game in round 19, which is, I think, a, a positive sign as well. And that's 
Lockie Cowan or someone pulled me up the other day saying it's actually Cohen, pronounced Cohen, but I'm going to run with Cowan at the moment. Um, but yeah, I think I think the club obviously really like him, um, and rightly so. He's a nice size at 189 centimeters. Can potentially play that hybrid defender role. He is hard at it. Um, not a bad intercept grab, but I think. In time, we're going to see, I suppose, the traits that made him, I suppose, a really sort of draftable prospect coming through um, in 2022 in that national draft. And that is that is the flair in the back half and also his long and penetrating kicking as well to position. We haven't seen the best of that yet. Whether he gets whether he gets a lot of opportunities again this season and, and add to his Add to his seven games. I'm not quite sure because there is a lot of competition for spots in our back line. Um, but, yeah, exciting prospect all the same. Lockie Cowan. Okay, we roll on. At number 30, uh, a bit of a surprise back at uh, when he came into the team in round 14, which coincided with our dream run in the back half of last season, is Lockie Foggy. It looked like his time was pretty much done at Carlton, but he strung together that sort of patch of games, including the three finals. Um, whether he was keeping other players out of the team is questionable. Whether he can hold his spot uh, moving forward is questionable as well, particularly with the uh, with the recruiting of Elijah Hollands and also Razio Fantasia, and if we can also get Corey Durden back fit and firing as well, his spot might be in danger. What I like about Fogarty is his ability sometimes to go into the midfield. He's a little bit more flexible in that regards compared to, say, a Matt Owies. The biggest problem for me is ball use and skill, although he's very good below his knees. He's a good tackler. He's pretty consistent. Um, but he does not hit the scoreboard. You know, he played that big block of games, but only kicked the four goals um, throughout his uh, his 12 games in season 2023. So at number 30, we have Lockie Fogarty. He's such a difficult player to assess, David Cunningham, so I'm going to pop him in at number 29. Coming into... Uh, Season number nine on an AFL list and only played 50-odd games. Uh, just a wretched run. Just been, hasn't been able to get on the park consistently. Didn't play any football at all in 222. Will what he was able to produce in the second half of last season where he strung 12 games together be a launching pad coming into um, 224? I'm not quite sure. He has... A heap of talent. He's got a great combination of the inside game and outside game. He is the type of player that you need in your team. It's just the re reliability of his body um, and whether it can hold up to the rigours of AFL football. So I have him pretty high at number 29, but at the same time, I could see him if he's able to Get his game going, being a, a permanent fixture in this football team, but it's a big, it's a big but. And there is plenty of competitions for his spot as well. His final series last year wasn't great. In fact, those two games were clearly his poorest after putting in a fine performance against the Giants in round 24, where he picked up 24 disposals and kicked a goal. But at this stage, I like what he brings. Um, I'm just not confident in seeing enough of David Cunningham over the course of a whole season. At number 28, I'm going to go with small forward Corey Dude, and I'm hoping like hell that he can get back to tracking in the right direction, which he showed in his second year in 222, where he played the 21 games and was our leading goal assist player. Last year, a combination of, I suppose, injury in the second half of the season, plus a little bit of poor form as well. I saw him, I suppose, come into this season, not so much under pressure, but a fair bit to prove. I think at his very best, his pressure and his hardness around the ball and also his speed and power 
could be invaluable for us in our front half, but also like his ability to get up the ground and, and help out defensively, defensively, which he showed he was able to do um, in his second season where he strung together a really solid year. So Corey Durden, I could quite easily, if his form's up, see him being in our best 22-23 uh, players. But at the same time, we're starting to build a really solid small forward brigade. At 27, I'm going to go with Lewis Young. I want to know, I want to pose the question, what is the real Lewis Young? Is it the player that came across from the Western Bulldogs in 222 and was just a, a really good player for us, particularly when Jacob Wiedering went down as a key defender and showed some great signs? Or is it the Lewis Young from 223 who really struggled um, just couldn't find his best form, ended up back in the VFL and stagnated somewhat, came back into the team when we were short of Ruckman, showed his flexibility that he could play that role. I would like to think that it is the Lewis Young that we saw in 2022. I think, you know, the rumours regarding um, the fact that he, you know, Jacob Wiedering wasn't particularly happy with him when they were playing together concerns me somewhat. But I think he's really important for us, particularly now that Wiedering's down. And I, I'm pretty sure that Lewis Young will get early opportunities to show his wares in, uh, in 224. And I hope he takes them with both hands because he has shown an ability to intercept the ball really well at 201 centimetres. He's got really good mobility as a key defender. Um, I'd just like to see him really improve his intensity um, and aggression as well. I think I think we may see the best of Lewis Young this year. Well, I hope so anyway.